Yo, yo, what's hood, Seminole family? It's the morning after. And uh, I'm not even on here to really talk much for the state. I would like to point out, you know, before I really get started in this video, uh, Wake Forest lost. My review, I said, you know, we should win that game, but we might not be favored in that game. Well, we're definitely going to be favored in that game now. And that just that just solidifies my stance on the next five games. Wake Forest gave up 62 points to Louisville. Now, I don't I, I know we played Louisville already. I don't know how good Wake Forest offense really is, but there's not a damn way in hell. Let me tell you something right now. If that defense gives up 62 points, that defense gives up 30 points to Wake Forest. Willie Tiger better fire Harlan Barnett right there on the field or he can go to. I'm not even going to sugarcoat it. That whole defensive staff will get needs to be fired on the spot. And if they and if, the, if the head coach doesn't have the balls to do it, he can go to. And let's just rebuild. Let's just start a new another rebuild. And let's just uh, get another coach in here. That'll do what needs to be done. Because that was one of Jimbo Fisher's biggest downfalls at the end of his tenure. Is he didn't want to let go of guys who weren't getting the job done. Like Lawrence Dossey at wide receiver. Our wide receivers were some of the worst wide receivers under Jimbo Fisher. Outside of one year, Rashar Green, um, Kelvin Benjamin, and uh, Shaw, Kenny Shaw. Those three guys, after those three guys, we recruited five stars like George Campbell, Ermon Lane, I can go on and never got anywhere the amount of production we should have got out of those guys. Jimbo didn't want to let go of people like a Charles Kelly. Just he, he didn't want to make the decisions because he was friends with these guys. And that would led to his downfall. And you notice that when he left for AM, he didn't take none of those guys that people wanted fired. He didn't take none of his buddies with him to AM because it was an easy out for him. Well, Gant, well, damn it, Taggart, if we give up more, man, if we give up 28 points to Wake Forest, I want everybody fired, including you, if you can't make the decisions to do it. Now, with that out the way, good morning and happy Sunday. I'm doing a little bit different this morning. I want to talk about some, uh, some boxing, because I actually am an avid boxing fan, you know, and uh, last night... Uh, I wanted to tune into Alexander Usyk's uh, heavyweight debut against uh, <laughs> the um, car salesman, and I'm not joking here, legit car salesman, Chaz Witherspoon. Um, going to jump right into it, man. Well, the first, the fight before that was uh, Bivol. He's a he's one of the light uh, light heavyweight champs. I forget which belt he has, man. Shoot. Is he the IBF? I'm not sure. I, I, I'm i not going to sit here and pretend like I, I know off the top of my head what belt he has. But he's one of the four champs. And, uh, man, that fight was extremely boring. I fell asleep during that fight. Um, and the fans even booed Bivol after that fight because that was an extremely boring fight. So we're going to move on for that. We're not even going to talk about that. Uh, Alexander Usyk. How did he look in his heavyweight debut? Did he impress? Usyk has been uh, leading up to this fight, because obviously when you're trying to sell a fight and make yourself relevant, he's been name dropping Wilder, uh, saying Wilder is a uh, he's in Wilder's head or Wilder's an easy fight for him. Well, let's see. Was Wilder would Wilder be an easy fight for a guy who just went seven rounds with a with a. Uh, Man by the name of Chaz Witherspoon, a 38-year-old car salesman. Uh, I had Usyk winning every round. So let's get the pos let's get the positives out the way first, because I kind of got a lot to say on the back end. Usyk won every round, no doubt. And Usyk, from a just a pure boxing standpoint, as far as hitting, not getting hit. Controlling the you know the the uh, ring ring generalship you know controlling distance, Usyk dominated. Usyk Usyk did what Usyk was supposed to do as a guy that has over three hundred amateur fights 
is a two-time Olympian and a gold medal winner and an undisputed cruiserweight champion. So as the boxer, Usyk did exactly what he was supposed to do, looked how he was supposed to look in terms of boxing. And I keep bringing boxing up because that's a big key when we're talking about the heavyweight division here. We're not talking about welterweights and we're not talking about middleweights, right? We're talking about the heavyweight division. And there are things that Usyk did in this fight against a guy on five, five day notice. He took this Chaz Witherspoon. Kudos to Chaz Witherspoon. Yeah, I called him a car salesman, but again, that's not me talking about him. That's not a knock on him. He's a legit car salesman. And he took this fight on a five day notice. And he's only fought four times in, I think, four years. I think he fought twice in 2016, once in 2017, and once this year. That's 16, 17, 18, 19. That's four years. And yet, from a, a, for Usyk, in my opinion, he was, was supposed to come out and in my opinion, if you wanted to show that you were a player in the heavyweight division, you needed a better performance. Yes, he dominated from a boxing standpoint. He damn sure did. Won't take that away from him. But if we're talking about the heavyweight division and a guy that is undisputed cruiserweight champ, for your first fight to be against this guy on this notice at 38 years old, I got to see better than that. You're supposed to stop this guy within four or five rounds. If you want to be a, a, a legit heavyweight contender, you got to stop this guy in four or five rounds. Because I'm telling you right now, if you think for one second, and this ain't, Usyk created this talk by, by dro name dropping the champ, Deontay Wilder. If you think for one second, Wilder would have ended with a spoon with it. Wilder would have did what he did with a spoon. Wilder would have uh, did what he did to Brazil to with a spoon. I'm telling you that right now. <laughs> he would have dropped Witherspoon in the first round and it, it would have been an easy night's work. Now, I understand when o Usyk, he doesn't have that, that power that Wilder has. But what, they, what, you're supposed, what Usyk is supposed to be is an extremely high volume puncher and relentless and never stops. And he didn't show that to me uh, for whatever reason. So the commentary tried to make it seem like Usyk just was trying to get rounds in, get the rust off, get... That's bogus and that's BS to me. We're talking about a guy, about a guy with over 300 amateur fights. And was an undisputed cruiserweight. And a gold medal. Like, you're talking about one of the legit pound for pound best boxers in the sport. And all of a sudden, this guy needs rounds against a Chaz Witherspoon just because he had a, a, a bicep surgery. Um, I think the roles would be reversed. And because he had that surgery, you probably would want to get him out there quick so you don't risk re-injuring yourself and rest more. But then maybe that's just me being too logical and not knowing what the hell I'm talking about. I don't know. <clears throat> so the, 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 oh, I just want to get, <clears throat> excuse me, I just want to get rounds in, excuse, that the commentary team was pushing is a no-go. Kudos to Usyk in the, uh, the post-fight interview. I didn't watch the post-fight press, but the post-fight interview, he was asked that question, and uh, you know there's a language gap or whatever, but he didn't say that. He said, I was just doing what my coaches wanted me to do. Um, I think that's more or less him saying, I couldn't quite get him out like I wanted to. I would like to really point on... Um, so I kind of I did a round-by-round round note. Like I said, I gave every, every round to Usyk. I made little notes for each round. I thought... The first two rounds were extremely slow, and Witherspoon looked pretty comfortable in there. Round three was, was key, and to my opinion, he was hitting Witherspoon. He was hitting him all night. The problem is, at no point did I think he was hurting Witherspoon. Witherspoon was just a guy out of shape, old, and hasn't fought. I mean, on a five-day notice, do we really think Willis was in the camp waiting on a call? He took a payday, which I don't blame the man for taking a payday. Again, he sells cars as his actual job. Good, honest, works living. If they called him up and said, man, we got 600K on you to fight Usyk, who wouldn't 
hell, I don't train. And you call Eddie Hearn, call me right now and say, man, get in the ring with Usyk for 600. I get in the ring. So, you know, I expect him to take that. He, he, he took that fight for a reason. But at no time did I feel like Usyk was hurting him. At no time did I feel like Usyk was uh, making him really like, oh, like, no. I, he was hitting him. I don't think he ever hurt him. And as a matter of fact, I, it might have been in that third round. I can't, I can't quite remember what round it was. But Usyk was hit him with a good combination and he pushed him back into the corner. And he began to try to unload on Witherspoon and Witherspoon caught him with a short left. Bow! Right clean on the chin. It wasn't enough to, 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 to put him down, but you can tell that the power was different to Usyk's mind. Because Usyk, when Usyk got hit, he immediately backed up. And he didn't press him again in the corner like that until he knew he had him gassed. And about, it was like the sixth, the fifth and sixth rounds is when he really started to put pressure on him. Um, and I think by then we all could see it if you were watching. Man, Witherspoon was gassed. As a matter of fact, I think the round before they eventually waved the fight off, uh, his corner asked him if he okay. And he, he gave a really an answer that if I was the corner, I probably would have thought about start stopping the fight then. Because he's like, he asked him if he was okay. And he's like, man, I'm all right. And when, if you if you know what that you know what I'm saying if you from where I'm from I'm alright you know that don't mean anything good he ain't alright and uh, yeah but Usyk didn't really look good to me and again I think Usyk tasted a, I don't I don't think Witherspoon's known as a guy that can crack and again a guy that hasn't trained I think Witherspoon showed some solid boxing ability uh, he was obviously the bigger man but he. He looks slow because he is slow. And again, against anybody else, Witherspoon probably won't even, wouldn't have lasted as long as he lasted against Usyk. Um, I think Usyk takes that left hand, that left hook, and I don't quite think he wanted to risk it anymore. So that brings me to really like, that was the fight. Let's talk about the residuals of the fight going forward for Alexander Usyk. Um... As an undisputed cruiserweight, he might want to uh, bring his competition level up. I don't think Eddie Hearn is ever going to put... He's not going to put Usyk in any harm's way because Usyk is the WBO mandatory right now <laughs> because he was undisputed. WBO got the rule where you're undisputed in one weight class and you move to the other one, you automatically are the number one guy to go after that WBO belt. Whatever. I think it's stupid. You got to prove yourself in said division that you're in. Who cares what you did in the lower division? Prove yourself in the division that you made your mark off of. Um, or prove yourself the division that you're in now. I'm sorry. Prove, you know, if I move up to heavyweight, I, damn it, I got to prove that I'm a legit heavyweight contender. Who cares what I did at cruiserweight? If you want to live off that, go back down to cruiserweight. Um, but regardless, he is the WBO number one. And there's a lot of talks about if Ruiz wins, him not fight, Ruiz might try to go straight into a fight with Wilder, which would, I mean, that would be where the money is for Undisputed. And WBL may decide to strip a Ruiz. And, you know, that's whatever on that end. I think that's bogus. So they're not going to risk Usyk fighting. I think Usyk's next fight will be another, might be the, you know, it, it, it might be against a Taco. Now, uh, I think after seeing tonight, I think Takum is a lot riskier fight than maybe a lot of people may have thought going into it. Takum's better than Witherspoon by a mile. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I would be more interested in seeing that Takum fight than what the hell I got tonight. Because going forward, Usyk's got a lot to prove. Because I think there's some guys that give Usyk some work. I think a guy like Joseph Parker would beat Usyk. And I'm not high on Joseph Parker. I think the, the steroid scumbag Gerald Big Baby Miller at, at 300 pounds and a guy who throws a ton of punches, volume punches as well, yeah, I think he could give Usyk a lot of problems. Because that's a lot of weight in that ring that I don't, I don't think Usyk would, would really be used to dealing with. I really do. You know that, And that's just the, that's the, 
the B-grade heavyweights I'm talking about right there. The Parkers, Jarrell Miller, hell, maybe even a Dillian White. He might be able to get a Dillian White, though. Dillian White can crack, but his movement might be able to frustrate a guy like Dillian White. I don't know. Dillian White isn't a supreme athlete. Uh, but those B-level guys, man, some of those fights are real interesting for Usyk going forward. I'll tell you right now, after that performance, and again, I want to specify, great boxer. But when, this is the one division where who cares how you box? Because if a guy touches you, you go to sleep. Tyson Fury, probably the best heavy boxer in the heavyweight division from a boxing standpoint. I don't believe he's the best heavyweight. And he's shown that he can go down before in the past. He, a cruiserweight put Tyson Fury down in the past in Cunningham. If you get touched in this division... You go to sleep. And then when we start talking about the top guys, the elite guys, I'm telling you right now, AJ might can't take a punch. He might have a weak chin. AJ would put Usyk down. I don't even think Usyk hits hard enough to really bother Anthony Joshua. Again, he was hitting Witherspoon all night. And with some of them shots, if he could have hit, if he, was, if he was cracking, he should have put Witherspoon down and he didn't. He couldn't put a 38-year-old man off the couch down. And he was hitting him flush. You telling me he'll put AJ down? No, AJ would, would drop Usyk. Ortiz. And that'd be a very interesting good fight. That's a two super, supreme boxers right there. But Ortiz can crack. Ortiz, uh, Ortiz would, would set up a counter and he would put Usyk down. It'd be, it'd be very interesting. Now, granted, I don't know Usyk's chin for that matter. I don't know how well he can take a punch. But again, a key moment in this fight happened when he had Witherspoon in that corner and Witherspoon checked him with a left hook. And I felt like Usyk didn't want no more smoke up, up close and personal after that. He started boxing smarter. He said, you know what? I'm going to wear him out and take him into deep waters where I can stop him then. He didn't want any of that. And it was smart. But again, we start talking about the elite heavyweights in, in the division. And I meant, and, and guess what? I ain't even mentioned the bronze bomber yet. Because if, I'm telling you right now, if you think Usyk could do anything with Deontay Wilder, you are sadly mistaken. That, that fight between Wilder and Usyk may be similar to a, uh, the Spilka fight. Well, Spilka had some good moments, and he was slick, and he was able to frustrate Wilder. Wilder wasn't even that, Wilder wasn't as good as he is now. He was the champ then, and Wilder's even better now. So it would probably be shorter. Like I, you know, he would he would probably really hurt Usyk. I don't think Usyk stands a chance against any of the elite guy or any of the top guys. Fury would just be flat out too big for him. If we're talking about from a boxing standpoint, Fury can move like Usyk, and he's six nine. So, Usyk wouldn't be able to do a damn thing with Tyson Fury. Usyk's best bet is maybe to fight fight a guy like Otto Wallin, who just gave Fury a hell of a fight. But but Otto Wallin's six six, you know, six five. But Otto Wallin also showed that you know he he can gas out. But fight an active fighter like that if you're Usyk, and 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 maybe prove me wrong and show me something because what you show tonight doesn't cut it. That that's there's nothing there to um. To be excited about what I like I said, dominant performance. I will not take a dominant performance away from a, a, a man who got who got in the ring and he did what he was supposed to do. But if we're talking in the heavyweight division against the elite heavyweights, that was not that was a bad performance. Because again, your boxing ability is really next, it, it doesn't mean much, in my opinion. It doesn't mean much in this division. Because guys are putting guys to sleep. This isn't the heavyweight division of, of, of 20, you know, where a guy like Klitschko could dominate. Because not only was he the biggest, there wasn't even any good boxers in the division then. We got a little mix of some good boxers, some good technical fighters. And then, we, you know, we got some hard hitters. But what you have in this, in this division that you probably 
more than any time in history, you got some supreme athletes. Like people want to talk about Wilder and his skills, which are 10 times better than what people give him credit for. But the athlete that Deontay Wilder is, is a lot faster than people give him credit for. You know, so we'll keep the jury out on Usyk. I was not impressed by his first fight, even though, like I said, he did dominate and he did what he was supposed to do against uh, against the guy that works down at 7-Eleven. I see him every time I go get gas. So, yeah, that's a good job. Um, if you like this type of content with the Boxing Talk Man, uh, subscribe, like it and share it. You know, I will be doing I'm still Polk County known, man. We still doing Florida State all day, every day, 24-7, ride or die here, bleed, garnered and gold. But I like to get some other stuff out there, you know. I do watch other stuff. Football, basketball, boxing. You know, we can talk about all of that stuff going forward, man. And if you like the content, man, I appreciate it, man. Uh, go Knowles and uh, enjoy your, the rest of your Sunday, guys.